Hey, good morning, church family. Pastor Jeff here, and uh, just glad that you're joining us here on this Monday morning. It is April the 27th, uh, so we are plugging along through our shelter-in-place here in the state of Georgia um, through April 30th. Uh, as of May 1st, the uh, governor's changing uh, changing things a little bit. Um, still have a shelter in place for those 65 years and older as of May 1st and those with some pre-existing health conditions and uh, the shelter in place is being lifted for those um, in good health and of younger years. Um, but still the governor will be recommending uh, no groups of more than 10 through a excuse me, through May the 13th. So here on uh, April 27th, let me look at the calendar. So we're looking at at least three more weeks of uh, limited group size for sure, and uh, or a limited size of 10, um, and then we'll see where they go after that. So devotions are going to keep coming Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and uh, just looking forward to just continuing through. We're, I'm going to keep looking at some of the names of God, and we're in Genesis chapter 14, where we first see another name for God in the Old Testament, and that's where we're going to jump into today. So um, I'm going to look at Genesis 15, or excuse me, Genesis 14, and uh, this is a chapter where um, it, it lists some of the kings going to war, and it, and it talks about a couple of different alliances and, and how they went to war, and and these this coalition won this year, and then there was some freedom this year, and then uh, there was another conflict. And, uh, and what this has to do with the story of Abram is that in one of the conflicts, Lot and his family was taken captive. And so Abraham, excuse me, Abram took matters into his own hands and uh, he went after the, um, the raiding parties that had come in, that had taken um, Lot and his family, and he fought them and he was able to bring back Lot, Lot his family, and um, came back to the kings, I guess, that had been defeated. And so the kings that had been defeated, the king of Sodom, and uh, Genesis 14, verse 18 says, Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. He was priest of God Most High. And so this is the introduction to a new name of God that's not been recorded yet in the Bible, and that is God Most High. We'll keep reading here for a second. This is what Melchizedek, he blessed Abram and said, Blessed be Abram by God Most High, possessor of heaven and earth, and blessed be God Most High who has delivered your enemies into your hand. And Abram gave him a tenth of everything. And the king of Sodom said to Abram, Give me the persons, but take the goods for yourself. And Abram said to the king of Sodom, I have lifted my hand to the Lord God Most High, possessor of heaven and earth, that I would not take a thread or a sandal strap or anything that is yours, lest you should say, I have made Abram rich. So here we have God uh, Most High. Now I think it's, it's cool um, here in verse 22 um, we can see that Abram is clearly linking Yahweh to the Lord Most High, that he's talking about one and the same God. And it's really neat that we see that in Genesis, that when a lot of times when a new name of God is introduced, Moses ties the, ties the new name with a name that's already been presented so that the reader knows we're talking about the same God. And so... Um, this is a, uh, uh, the, the word in Hebrew would be El Elyon, uh, that would be spelled E-L is one word, and then that's God, and then most high is E-L-Y-O-N. And so, um, we see in, um, in the Old Testament, we're going to look at some more of them, El Shaddai maybe is one you're f familiar with, El Olam, El means God, the strong one, and then uh, this adjective gets added, and it helps to give a better description. So El Elyon is God most high. So the strong one who's the most high, who's the highest um, uh, exalted one. So 
uh, different kings, different rulers would have different strengths, different um, abilities to reign, different reach to their rule. But this refers to God as being the most high, the one who is higher above any other. And it is really references the fact that God is supreme over anyone and everything. Um, and this is indicated both what Melchizedek says and what Abram repeats back, um, referring to him as God most high, possessor of heaven and earth. So God rules over both the heavens and the earth. He is over everything. So um, Blue Letter Bible says that this name of God expresses the extreme sovereignty and majesty of God and his highest preeminence. So there's no one higher than God. And so what I want to do this morning is um, I'm going to read from several different Psalms, uh, maybe three or four, where this term God Most High is used and we'll get uh, a little bit of a feel for um, how do we use this term for God. And most of the references to God Most High is found in the Psalms, so that's where we're going to go. So let me um, read a couple to you. Psalm 47, verses 1 and 2 says this. This is a psalm of praising. This is a song of rejoicing. Uh, it says, Clap your hands, all people. Shout to God with loud songs of joy. For the Lord, the Most High, is to be feared, a great king over all the earth. So this is a psalm where God's being praised, God is being celebrated, um, there's a rejoicing over who God is, and it emphasizes that he is the most high, he is to be feared, he is to be reverenced, he is to be awed, and he is a great king over all the earth. So he doesn't have a king, he's not a king that rules over a certain territory or a, a city or a tribe, but he is a God that rules over the whole earth. Um, Psalm 83, 18 is another one that um, is, is just um, 83, 18. Uh, let me look at my notes. This is 78. Um, this is a, the conclusion of a psalm, and it says that they may know that you alone, whose name is the Lord, whose name is Yahweh, we've talked about Yahweh, are most high over all the earth. So again, emphasizing that God is not a God of a region. Um, in the in ancient times, most gods had uh, some sort of power. So there was maybe a fertility god. There was the god of the rain, um, uh, rain that would get, provide moisture for the soil. There was the god of the sun. There was the god of the moon. Um, there were all these different gods, and this, this psalm is underlying that God is most high over all of the earth. Another one of praise, Psalm seven seventeen. I will give to the Lord the thanks due to his righteousness, and I will sing praise to the name of the Lord, the Most High. So we see in these psalms that this, this name of God, the Most High God, is often tied to people giving praise, to people worshiping. And when we realize that God is the Most High, that God is supreme, then He will get our worship. He will get our praise. He will get um, our thanksgiving. But also, um, when we recognize that God is Most High, we will also call out to Him during our time of need. And um, Psalm 57 verses 1 through 3 says this, Be merciful to me, O God, be merciful to me. For in you my soul takes refuge. In, your shadow, in the shadow of your wings I will take refuge till the storms of destruction pass by. So here's, I believe this psalm, or they believe anyways, that perhaps David wrote this psalm when he was hiding from King Saul in the, in the cave. This, before David was king, he's hiding out. Saul's pursuing him. Saul wants to take his life. And David says, I, my soul takes refuge in you. In the shadow of your wings, I'll take refuge till the storms of destruction pass by. I cry out to God Most High. I cry, cry out to El Elyon. Um, why? Because he, he's Most High. Why, why cry out to, to someone who doesn't have the supreme reign and rule like our God does? 
uh, it says, to God who fulfills his purpose for me. So God most high will fulfill his purpose for me. He will send from heaven and save me. He will put to shame him who tramples on me. God will send out his steadfast love and his faithfulness. So David calls out not just to anyone, but to God most high, God who is above any situation that we have. So, so often, you know, we're dealing with different things. We're dealing with life circumstance. We're dealing with maybe difficult relationships. Um, maybe we're dealing with loneliness right now. We're dealing with uncertainty. And God promises to be with us, he promises to never leave us, never forsake us. And so, um, you know, this we talk a lot about this idea that God is here with us. He's He's here in the room with me as I'm talking to you. He is with you as you're uh, listening, maybe a uh, beautiful morning, maybe you're out on your back porch, your deck, maybe you're sitting in your living room, in your office. So we talk about, we, we're always talking about God's with us, and that's such an important thing for us to understand. But he is also God most high, and he rules over everything. So he's not just God, yes, he's with us as we are trying to figure things out, as we're trying to sometimes muddle our way through life. But he's not down stuck in the mud trying to figure things out. He is with us, yes, but he is also God Most High, supreme ruler over everything. He sees all. He sees our past. He sees our present situation. He sees our future. And even though he is with us, he's still the Most High. He's still uh, supremely exalted over everything. So as we as we go through our week um, and you're spending time in prayer, uh, it would be great to just to say, God, thank you that you are the most high, that you are above all things, that you, even though you are with me, you are uh, never, never leaving me. You're right here in this situation with me. You are still the most high. You are exalted. You are not weighed down by the trials of in, in difficult circumstances of this world. Um, so as we're going through these names of God, what I would encourage you to do is during your prayer time to incorporate these names of God into your conversations with him. So uh, recognizing that he is most high, recognizing that he is Adonai, he is our ruler, he is our master, which should help to keep us humble, which the Bible calls us to be. Um, recognizing that he is the self-existing one, that uh, recognizing that he always was, that he always is, and he always will be. So incorporating these, um, these names and these titles of God we're learning into our conversations with him will help us to have the right perspective of who he is and how he interacts with us. So remember this week that God is the Most High. And even though he is the Most High, the supreme ruler over everything, he's also right there with you at the same time. So whether you're um, like some of these psalms where the psalmist was just in, in a moment of joy, in a moment of celebration, in a moment of praise, thanking God that he was the Most High, or when you're in a dark situation where you're uncertain, where you need comfort, where you need direction, where you um, lack understanding, God is the Most High. And he's with you, but he is also above the situation that you're in, and he will see you through. So um, love you guys. Think about this week referring to God using these different names as, we, as we're understanding more and more the attributes of God, the character of God, through understanding what he has, how, how he has described himself with his names in his word. So love you guys. We'll talk to you soon.